Hi guys, I have an A4 piece of paper and I'm going to fold a corner very carefully, like this is origami, to a point. So in effect, I've taken a 90 degree angle and divided it in two to have a 45 degree fold in the piece of paper. So I've put some black paper behind where I'm working so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got the folded piece of paper and now I'm going to draw a design into here. Now you could just make up a design, but I'm going to use something that will help me structure it. So I'm going to write numbers. I'm working in pencil, notice that's important. I'm drawing a number one. I'm going to add a number three. And number four. You might not be happy with your exact arrangement, but just roll with it. I'm going to draw number five, pressing quite hard. A six. A seven. You can put a cross bar on the seven, but I'm connecting a cross to the five. <coughs> each time I'm having the numbers touch each other. An eight. I'm doing number nine and I might include the zero. So I have created a pattern using numbers. So I've now drawn the numbers on one side and I'm going to cut off the excess paper at this stage. I don't need it anymore. You could just cut it small, you don't have to cut it like I have at a profile. So what we have is a 90 degree corner divided into two and along this line we're going to create mirror symmetry of what we have here over there. So I'm going to take the image and fold it in half so that the image now is on the inside. I can see the indented drawing on the outside and I'm either going to press really hard, I can do that with the back of my fingernail and transfer it, or just draw over the top of it. Drawing over the top of it will get more acute pressure. And it will transfer the image. So I've drawn over the outside and now if I open it up, you can see that the image has transferred along the center line to create mirror symmetry. I'm now going to draw over the lines so it's nice and clear. So in effect, I've created a pattern which is based on numbers but they're almost abstracted you kind of lose the sense that there are numbers in there now from the work we've been doing at school we know that this will repeat one mirror symmetry down and down again but what we're going to do now is go on to do some pattern and work into it. Now, whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to draw the corresponding line there. I'm going to draw this line here. I'm going to draw the corresponding line there. Now, you may not have um, many art materials at home, but that's absolutely fine. If you do and you have some colours, you might want to colour sections in. I would suggest a limited range of colours, don't go crazy. I'm going to use red, I'm going to use yellow and stick with the black. But if you don't have colours, that's absolutely fine. You can do this with pencil crayons, it doesn't matter. You see, whatever I do at one side, I do at the opposite side. Sometimes I've coloured in, for example, the zero shape, the circular shape within the nine. But here on this, between the six and the eight, I'm filling in a part of the negative space. So I've gone on to add some colours with the red and the yellow felt tips. So what I've done is I've drawn round sections and I've started to put pattern in. I'll do another section to show you exactly how I've gone about that. So I've identified a section that I'm going to work in and I'm drawing around it with my pen now if you don't have a pen you can do it in pencil this whole exercise could be done in pencil and you could use tonal areas 
you wanted to add some variation rather than the solid fill. You can have gradients into sections. So everyone's work will be slightly different, again, based upon the materials we have at home. So I'm going to follow that line and I'm going to draw parallel lines about a millimetre apart. I'm going to fill that box quite carefully, right the way to the edge. And over here, I'm following the same line, that line, about a similar distance apart. Now I could count them and make sure I'm being accurate, but this is going to have a hand-drawn quality. So I'm not going to worry too much. See how I've gone over the line there? I want to cover that up. I might do a solid fill into that section. So you can use solid fill or thickening of lines to disguise anything that you're not quite happy with. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to continue this line. See, I'm working on one side and the other. So I'm not finishing one section um, on the side. I'm doing a little bit at a time and then do the mirror symmetry so I can keep up to date with where I am and not get confused. I'm going to draw that line in there and that line in there. And into here. Now this goes right across the centre line. I might put lines into it. Because I'm going straight across that centre line, I can just draw it without worrying about doing the two halves separately. I'm going to add some new features. I've not done this before, as long as I'm doing it on the other side. To create my mirror symmetry, you can see the design developing. So I've worked on the full design and I can continue to add elements to it. But obviously, whatever I do at one side, I want to make sure I do at the other side. So I've drawn something that looks a little bit like a paw sticking across. And I want to be at the same angle over here. Now, if I make a mistake, so say I draw a line here and I don't want it there, I still have to commit to it on both sides. But then I might try something new. So I've drawn four lines in that gap, all radiating out. So I can keep trying different things. The design could become ever more complex as I'm adding things in. It's reminding me a little bit of uh, playing cards because of the colours. Um, totem poles. So I'm making visual connections. I could create some kind of pattern and face into it or something else beyond the abstract nature of this design. But to be honest, I like the abstract within it. So it making me think a little bit about an owl. Now there is a slight change in the design at this side and that side where that piece comes across and it's thicker there. So I've worked out a, a minor change. I've done a little correction. To be honest, those things will not matter. And what we'll go on to do is photograph this and using PowerPoint generate a repeat pattern. Hi guys, so I've done exactly the same task as this one, but in here I've obviously put the numbers down in a different arrangement, come up with a slightly different design, and I've put solid fill areas in. In some places I've put like a gradient in, like a blend, you can see on here. I still added pattern like I've done in the previous example. So even if you don't have felt tips or fine liners or anything like that, and you have a pencil or even a felt tip, just a single pen alone or a biro, you'd be able to create a design and put some different sections into it.